Hey gang, welcome back to Stud Pack. In this video, we're gonna waterproof this shower, but we're gonna do it in a little bit of an unconventional way. It seems like the waterproofing industry, the tile industry is changing monthly. There are constantly new products, new methods on the market on how to waterproof shower systems. So we're gonna take the tried and true and apply it to this shower and turn it into a waterproof, bulletproof shower. Now in our last video, we got a ton of stuff done. We started right here on the pony walls. We put in this copper, we clad them with backer board, put mesh tape and thin set all over them. And we even got a little bit of drywall compound on the walls. But when we're thin setting and putting drywall compound on walls and especially ceilings, kind of make a mess. So I have a little bit of drywall compound on the ground. I'm pretty proud of that. Not a whole lot, but we've got some thin set in the shower. Can we waterproof over that? Absolutely not. We're gonna scrape it smooth. Let's go outside and get the scraper, the vacuum and the broom and clean this job site. Now this floor may not look like it, but it is flat, smooth and clean and ready for waterproofing. Now, usually in a waterproofing video, this is where you start to see orange or red or maybe a blue green product going on the wall. But for this shower and maybe the first time on YouTube, we're going yellow. On this shower build for the waterproofing, we're gonna be using Triton products. On the last shower we did, we used their backer board. Absolutely loved it. Engineering behind all their products, top notch and the support from their company excellent as well. This is their waterproof membrane, a sheet membrane. That's one of the tried and true methods we talked about at the beginning of the video. And here's the band material, same product as that. And we'll do that around all our corners. So not only are we going to put it in the shower, since we have a whole roll that's 75 feet long, we're just going to do the whole bathroom. So it's nice and waterproof for my bud. So I say we unwrap this and pre-cut all our sheets. The whole roll, it's wide enough to do the whole shower. It's gonna come out to about right here. We'll have perfect overlap, a full sheet here with no notches. And at the doorway, we'll put a full sheet, notch around this wall, let's get it done. And there we go, all three of our sheets are pre-cut. And what a difference just putting some color in this bathroom makes. Like I said earlier, can't wait to see what tile's gonna look like in this epic shop bathroom. And we always recommend you pre-cut your sheets. It's a great idea. The last thing you want to happen is for your thin set to be hardening in the bucket while you're cutting your last sheet. Get it all done ahead of time. All the math is done. All you gotta do is spread thin set and smooth out your membrane into your thin set. The next thing I wanna do is plan my escape. I don't want to start spreading thin set at the doorway and applying the membrane there and work myself into the shower. Now I would have to walk over that soft thin set and potentially leave prints and low spots in it. Don't want to do that. We're going to start in the shower and the shower in itself poses some problems for us. It's easy to do this, but in the shower, here's what we're going to do. We're going to fold this half of the sheet back, put thin set here, apply this half of the sheet. I'll back up a little. And we'll fold this half of the sheet back. We can do this side. And if we have to, I can easily reach over the walls to smooth out the thin set with a knife. Once we get the shower done, this is easy. One half at a time, work our way right out the door. All right, gang, welcome to our thin set mixing tailgate. We're gonna use Mapai's large format floor and wall tile mortar to adhere our membrane to our backer board. We've got a good old bucket here, three and three quarter quarts of good old plain water. And we got our mixer chucked into our right angle drill. And uh, we're gonna go half a bag at a time because from previous experience, if we try to mix a full bag at a time in that bucket, this drill is gonna take you for a ride. All right, well that thin set is slaking. Let's see what size trowel we need. It says eighth inch square notch. What is that, dude? That one eighth? Yeah, that's an eighth inch right there. Cool, man. Awesome. Here we go. Big moment. And it begins. 
Man, this stuff is perfect, Jordan. Just the right amount of water. That's right. You must have taken chemistry class or something, huh? Actually, I never took chemistry. Remember, I was forced to take physics instead of chemistry. That's right. And I was like a sophomore in physics with all the seniors, That's and right. I like failed because it was so hard. I remember that. I but F that. equals MA, and now we're waterproofing. There we so go. Cool. Let's do it. <laughs> F equals MA. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't FMA, it was FML after I saw the, the grade I got. <laughs> Let's get all this thin set out of the drain. It's nice and clean, we don't have any issues. Check this out, Jordan. This stuff is kind of opaque. You see the ridges from my trowels? Right. Now I can see when I've got them all smoothed out with the knife. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. That way we know we've got 100% coverage and this thing is never coming up. Now you can see the difference in color. We've got thin set here, none on this side. So my plan is working. I'm going to fold this side back and we'll attach this side to this side. Go ahead. <laughs> Got it. Nice. Right, kind of a weird situation. Seems like I did paint myself into a corner, but we're just working a little bit of a time and work our way out. You can notice over here, I got a pretty good overlap, over two inches, which is what they want. Nice clean cut around the toilet. We'll put a little band over here after all this dries when we do our corner band. <laughs> we had this little flap left over, so instead of cutting it off, we're just gonna fold it over the corner because I can definitely see water coming over this edge. My friend has a big old shower in there. But that's not approved for wood use. What are you thinking? I know, I know, but something's better than nothing. I agree, I agree. Awesome, our waterproofing membrane is down on the floor. Love that yellow product from Triton. Now we can't walk on that, obviously, so it has to dry. We wanna walk on it really bad because we wanna finish the waterproofing, but we can't. We gotta give it time to dry. But the one thing we don't have is time right now. Normally we take off right now, Come back tomorrow when it's dry and finish our waterproofing. Right now we're gonna head across town, take you with us to a job site you haven't been to before. Jordan and I have been working hard over there. We're gonna show you a bunch of cool things. But for right now, I wanna get these two fans positioned, pointed in this bathroom. They're gonna help a little bit. I know that stuff's gonna dry no matter what, but we're gonna take every advantage we can so this stuff will dry. When we get back here, we can start waterproofing the corners. All right, here we are at our little kitchen refresh project. And you're probably asking yourself, hey, Stud Pack, how come you didn't show us this one? You guys are YouTubers, we wanna see what you're doing. Well, there's two reasons. Number one, we simply didn't have the time to film this one. And number two, we've already got a bunch of kitchens on our channel and we don't wanna show you another kitchen. But we figured today, why not take you on a little tour, show you some of the highlights, and we're gonna start with that beadboard ceiling. Now this originally was a drywall ceiling and the owners wanted beadboard to match a couple of the rooms in the house and tie everything together. So Jordan and I put one by three strapping across the ceiling this way at every joist with a screw so it's nice and strong. That gave us nailers for the beadboard that goes this way. And we drove a nail through the tongue of the beadboard into that strapping so you never see the fasteners. And it was a bit of a challenge. We did it off of this ladder and another one over here. Whoever had this position had the harder job. It's pretty high in the air. That is probably 12 foot up to the corner, passing nail guns back and forth. It took us a couple of days, but it looks fantastic. And before we installed them, we gave them a coat of primer so in case they shrink when they acclimate to the house, we don't get that line of unpainted wood. Now, funny thing, I ran out of primer, so you're gonna notice in the video, we got three or four right here that are natural colored, but they do have a primer, it's just clear primer, so it's gonna be okay. And now this crown you're seeing and the corner blocks, they were original. We carefully removed them and saved them and reinstalled them and it saved us a ton of time. And again, it's in keeping with the rest of the house, the details in the rest of the house. Then we came up here and caulked everything. And yes, is it possible to caulk crown and the beadboard and fill all these? Yes, it is, but I do not recommend it. And then this frame you're seeing around the skylight, we actually made this frame from the pieces that were framing the original fluorescent lights in this kitchen, repurposed those again, keeping with the theme of the house. But the piece inside that goes up inside the skylight, we made those out of some leftover beadboard. You're looking at the back of it. We ripped the tongue and the groove off and we calculated those angles in the corners. 
made it up, it looks fantastic. And we actually did that yesterday and we're almost ready for paint. Now let's talk about these walls. One thing we learned on our last project was if you have stubborn wallpaper, just leave it, prime over it, skim coat over it, you're, you're gonna be fine. We had stubborn wallpaper all over this kitchen and in the room behind Jordan. It wouldn't come off. So we gave it a coat of primer, two coats of mud, sanded in between. And if I hadn't told you that there was wallpaper under there, you would think this is brand new level five drywall. Now let's work our way to the cabinets. They are definitely an eye grabber, right? So they were all this color, all out here, all the doors, all the drawers. Owners wanted them painted. So we said, sure, we can do that. And that's a lot of work. But from another project we did where we painted all the cabinets, over a hundred pieces we painted outside, we learned enough on that, get our system down, and did a beautiful job on these. So painting cabinets, don't be intimidated. We gave them a bath with hot water, Dawn soap, take all the grease off, because we are in a kitchen, filled all the holes from the previous screw locations from the hinges, gave everything a light sanding, a vacuum, wiped down with lacquer thinner, of course, we had to paper everything because we didn't want paint inside. The coat of primer, we actually had the primer tinted towards the color of the cabinets. That's actually the door, which we haven't sprayed yet with the finished color. You're looking at the primer. And why'd you do that? Why'd you tint the primer? So we can one coat the finished color just like that. But this color is so close to the finished color, I kind of fought it and actually missed a couple spots, which we're gonna have to go back and catch later when we spray the doors and drawers. So if you pre-tint your primer, don't get it exactly the same as your finished color pro tip for you. All right, let's get to work. Wait a minute, dude. I want to show my doors. I'm proud of these things. There's 25 doors in the kitchen and they had a knife hinge. Jordan's going to show you a little shot of what a knife hinge is. Pretty cheap hardware and the owners wanted them replaced with a modern cup hinge with a soft close feature. So we had to fill in that slot. 25 doors, 50 slots. How in the world am I going to do all of that? Tossed around a couple ideas. What we came up with, Durham's water putty and Bondo. I used water putty, wore a latex glove, and I filled in the notch. So one application of Durham's water putty with just a glove on, packing it in, sanded that off with a little detail sander. Another application of the water putty with a putty knife, sanded that off. Third application, I used Bondo, sanded that off. But check it out, you can't even hardly tell where that is. I gotta look close, even with my glasses on. But lots of work to save those doors. We did it, I'm very proud of them. So remember back at our shop project where our thin set is drying? While that's drying, we wanted to come over here and get something done, so we're gonna paint the ceiling. Now when we prime the beadboard, it brought the grain up and it's kind of fuzzy. And we don't want the fuzziness, we're gonna sand it off and we're gonna make it smooth so the paint looks fantastic. How am I gonna sand it? Well, I'm gonna use this tool over here I actually bought for the drywall. I picked up this dust-free sanding system on Amazon for 168. We'll definitely put a link in the description below. I was tired of the stick with a little pad on the end and I didn't want to graduate all the way full bore to one with a motor and a light and all that. And I figured this kitchen was a great place to start with something like this. So it comes with a rectangular pad and a round pad. They alone are much larger than the pad on the little stick that we're all used to. But the big thing, dust free. It captures about 95% of the dust. And I could definitely tell it was working when I picked up my vacuum and it was so heavy and there's hardly any dust in the house. So we're gonna use this to sand the beadboard ceiling so it's nice and smooth and get a great paint job before the sun goes down. Let's get started. Oh yeah, knocking that fuzz off, that is super smooth. This paint job is gonna look killer. I'm not really getting this. All right, gang, we're prepped up like Dexter. We got our peep through the paint's ready to go. Let's spray this thing.
there we go, we're all sprayed. It took longer to clean the machine than it did to spray that ceiling, but it looks absolutely stunning. If you want to see more on this project, let us know in the comments below. But right now we got a bounce from this job site, head to the other one, because we got to waterproof some walls. Let's go. Ooh, the sun is set back here at our other project. Let me hit the lights, turn these fans off. And we're going to see if our thin set has dried enough for us to keep working at night. I don't know, man. Let's see. I like the fact that it's white. That's always a good sign that it's dried, right? I don't know. Actually, that's pretty hard, man. I think we're good. Let me, uh, let me see how it feels when I walk on it. Dude, I think we're good. This thing is solid as a rock. Dry, firm, ready for the next step. And what is the next step? We're gonna take our band we're gonna put a crease in it, and we're gonna put it right here around the entire room. You've seen it before, it's just me with some knee pads on my knees with some thin set and a knife. Pretty exciting stuff, let's get going. All right, our band is installed all the way around the perimeter, all the walls, all the pointing walls, and the shower. And of course, you saw us use the pre-manufactured inside and outside corners on the corners, so it is completely watertight. Now that the floor is waterproof, are we ready to tile? Actually, we could tile right now. This is super waterproof, good to go. People tile over back and board just like this every day. But we want to use that belt and suspenders approach. We're going to put a liquid applied membrane on here. We have a brand new product we want to show you and we're very excited about it. Here's the product we're going to use, Triton's Liquid Membrane by MyTech. It's a waterproofing and crack prevention membrane, perfect for shower pans and showers. Come over here and check this out. It's green friendly, water-based formula, low odor, we love that. Elastomeric, crack isolation up to an eighth of an inch. Easy to use, you can roll it on or spray it on. Fast drying for next day tile application, and it's high performance, exceeds all the NC standards. Can't wait to crack this open and get it on the walls. Check this thing out, Jordan. Look at that beautiful Whoa. color. Let's get our equipment and start putting some yellow on these walls. Man, I can't believe that. What just happened? Remember when I took my glasses off because I was afraid they were going to fall into our liquid membrane? Something much worse just happened. <laughs> my gun, dude, <laughs> my shield. It looks like I dipped it in nacho cheese. <laughs> Dang it. All right, let me go clean you that. You said that was a shield? Huh? You said that was a shield, right? Yes. Well, now it's uh, shielded from water. Right. Now it's waterproof. No. All right, liquid waterproofing is done. That was fast. We went from a dingy gray bathroom to the yellow submarine. And what that means for us, we are super excited. We are finally ready for tile. and We can't wait to show you guys the tile we picked out. Four different tile in this epic bathroom and all those videos are gonna roll next week. So thanks for all your support on this video and of our channel. We really appreciate it. Jordan and I are really excited to get this bathroom done, head to Texas and start in the stud pack house and keep cranking out videos for you guys. So get yourself some yellow waterproofing, coat your like button, smash it for us, drop a comment, ask a question, and we'll see you on the very next stud pack video.